This tutorial will review methods for inducing, maintaining, and monitoring anesthesia in amphibians. The presentation focuses on frogs, but the techniques are the same for other amphibians. Please note that this module is intended for veterinarians. While the information may help to educate non-medical personnel about the purposes of various procedures, the practice of veterinary medicine and the performance of the techniques described should be reserved for licensed veterinarians only. It should also be noted that all of the photographs and video in the presentation were obtained during routine clinical procedures as veterinarians were caring for ill amphibians. When preparing an amphibian for anesthesia, it is important to ensure it is stable prior to induction. Please see the clinical techniques and common clinical problems modules for techniques to treat sick amphibians. Once stabilized, it is best but not essential if the animal has not recently eaten. Anesthetic equipment, various concentrations of anesthetic solutions, and the surgery table should be prepared in advance so as not to prolong the anesthetic event unnecessarily. Tricane methane sulfonate, also called MS-222 or Finquil, is the preferred agent for anesthesia induction and maintenance in amphibians. It seems to be the safest in most species and results in a more rapid recovery compared to other agents. When dissolved in water, MS-222 is very acidic and will cause pain and irritation if not buffered before use. Buffering can be accomplished using a number of different methods. The formula listed here will produce a 1 gram per liter concentration of MS-222 buffered to near neutral. Alternatively, you can add baking soda to the solution and test the pH using a pH meter or pH strips. Generally, it requires approximately the same volume of baking soda as MS-222 powder to achieve a neutral solution. When using MS-222, it is also important to prepare multiple strengths of the solution prior to starting anesthesia. I recommend having at least two strengths and fresh amphibian ringer solution or dechlorinated water at a minimum before starting any prolonged procedure. The concentration range for an induction solution for most amphibians is between 0.05 and 0.2 percent, which is 0.5 to 2 grams per liter. The solution is administered as a bath treatment. The animal can be placed in a container or in a plastic bag for induction. The bag is preferred as it is less likely to cause injury when the animal goes through an excitement phase during induction. With either method, the animal must be monitored closely as they can drown if the nares are left under the water during induction. Induction should occur within 30 minutes and often occurs in distinct phases. Ventral erythema is usually the first sign. Here you can see erythema beginning on the feet of this frog. An excitement phase often follows. The degree of excitement may vary with the species. You can see here that the plastic bag is useful to help prevent injuries during this phase. Next, the writing reflex should be lost. Prior to this stage, the animal would not tolerate being placed on its back. A surgical plane of anesthesia is marked by loss of any voluntary motor or withdrawal reflexes. Often, gular respirations have also stopped at this point. The animal should retain a heartbeat throughout. After induction, the animal should be moved immediately to fresh water as the induction dose should provide enough working time for most procedures. Leaving the animal in contact with the induction solution for a long period may result in prolonged recovery or death. If more anesthesia time is needed, lower concentrations of MS-222 can be dripped or poured over the animal to prolong anesthesia. The depth of anesthesia can be changed by changing the concentration of the solution, but flushing with dechlorinated water or amphibian ringer solution should resume as soon as possible. An air stone can be used if desired to provide additional oxygen during the procedure. Once induced, the animal can be positioned in dorsal or ventral recumbency as needed. It is important to keep the animal moist throughout the procedure. A shallow bath can be used as seen here, or I prefer moistened, non-bleached paper towels or gauze with some type of incline provided. 
This way, the animal can be bathed with different concentrations of immobilization solution or flushed with ARS without having to move the animal from one bath to another. Remember, however, to keep the nares out of the water. The heart rate, respiratory rate, and reflexes should be monitored throughout the procedure. The heart rate can be monitored visually or by using a Doppler probe placed over the heart as shown here, by ECG leads attached to the animal via small needles, or by a small pulse oximeter probe attached to the limb. I prefer the flat Doppler probe seen in this photograph as it is easy to use and has the least potential to cause trauma. The respiratory rate can be monitored visually if present. For most animals in a surgical plane of anesthesia, gular respirations will stop, but cutaneous respirations will continue, so it is important to keep the animal moist and the solution surrounding it fresh. For recovery, the animal should be rinsed with amphibian ringer solution and monitored. Other anesthetic agents may be used. Benzocaine can be applied in a similar manner as MS-222. A 0.02 to 0.03% solution is appropriate for induction. Inhalant anesthesia may also be used successfully. Methoxyfluorine, halothane, and isoflurane have been used. Isoflurane has been administered via multiple routes, including as a standard chamber induction, bubbling the gas through a water bath in which the frog is immersed, manual restraint for intubation and forced administration, direct application of the liquid inhalant on the skin, or applying a mixture of liquid inhalant and a water-soluble gel to the body. In one study, dermal application provided the most consistent surgical anesthesia compared to other methods. Concentrations of 2 to 5 percent isoflurane as an inhalant should be sufficient to induce anesthesia within 5 to 20 minutes. Injectable anesthetics may also be used, but are harder to adjust and control once given. Ketamine can be given at a dosage range of 20 to 200 milligrams per kilogram IM. Animals may retain muscle fasciculations despite loss of deep pain reflex. Please also note that the drug dosages in this presentation represent the ranges used for many different species of amphibians. When using one of these drugs for the first time in any particular species, it is wise to start with a lower dose. If that is not effective, then additional drug can be given until the desired effect is reached. A number of useful references and resources regarding amphibian anesthesia are listed here. Thank you for your time and attention, and good luck with your future amphibian projects.